How you guys doing again today? So, uh, what we do a Zojo um, canvas example. Um, and this one here I'm gonna do is for some people I know that use a uh, live code and kind of want to use Ojo. In live code, you can make uh, custom interface items, buttons, all sorts of things. Well, you can do the same thing in jo Zojo. Uh, people might not know you can, but you can. You can use the canvas object to do so. So let me set some default properties on this canvas object. Let's make it 250 by 60, and let's give it a name of CV button. Let's uh, make a button. And I think everything is good. If you're on Windows, you may want to do the double buffer. But on Mac, we do not have to. And we can have it so it stretches to the window. Okay, fantastic. So let's kind of center this on screen. And we can actually make a button. I'm going to make a pretty big button here. Uh, something that you might want to use in, say, a multimedia type project or a game or something goofy like that. Okay, so let's look at some of the properties we're going to need. We're definitely going to need a paint event to paint some things. And we're going to also probably need stuff that uh, works. Oops, this is for the window. I want it for the button. Um, we're obviously going to need some mouse events. So let's get a mouse enter event. And let's also try a mouse exit event. And while we're here, we're going to need quite a few of these different ones. Mouse down. And we're also going to probably need a mouse up. And for now, that's probably a good amount of stuff to get us started. Now, we're probably going to want to paint ourselves um, a rectangle. So I brought up um, some docs here. These are just the local docs because my internet's down thanks to AT&T Uverse for really sucking again. Yes, they're horrible service. If you have them, do not get them. They're horrible. Uh, fill rect. So we can do is do a round rect that's filled. Actually, it's a, uh, not a round. Yeah, that is a round one. Yeah, so that's the one we want. So as you can see here, uh, it needs an X and a Y integer and then a width and a height. So first thing we need to do is we need to give it a color. So what we do is just call graphics. See up here, as you can see, paint G is graphics. So we just have to call G and then put a dot and then tell it what you need. So we actually go back and look here actually at the graphics section. And you can see the properties you have for colors, what we're looking for. And that's what sets the color. Um, so we're gonna set the color of the for color. And you can use several different kind of colors, but we're going to use an RGB. Um, and a good way to get colors, I have this little color app that I actually made in Zojo. It's a pretty neat little app, I think. Um, and I'm going to select this blue color here. And as you can see, it brings back a ton of values. Um, and what I'm looking for is RGB. So I can just copy that. And I can paste that right here in my project and bada boom, I have it. And let's just zoom that off screen for now. Okay, so we want to fill the rectangle of our button. So all we have to do now is look at what we were looking at. Fill round rect. Again, integer, x, y. So we're going to actually start this off at, at zero, 0, So here, let's just grab this. You can just kind of grab the example actually and say okay so want to start it at zero zero okay and then we want a width and a height so the best way to do that if you want it to be the size of the canvas you just say me dot width and come back and say me dot height and this right here will fill this in with a round rect oops i think we're missing something aren't we Yes, we are missing two more arguments at the end there. I noticed that right when we built it. Let's, we have to give uh, the rounded part a radius, and we're going to try 20. So for the horizontal and vertical space. And there you go. Look, hey, we got, we have what kind of looks like a button. 
ish. It's not buttonish yet, but maybe if we add a border now. So this here, we can actually put, let's put a little note up here that this is our fill. And next we're gonna put our, our border. So we can now change the color of that. We can just call the four color again. And actually we could just grab what we have here. Okay, we can grab that, but let's change the color of that. Let's bring this thing back up here and let's grab another color. Let's go with a little darker color. Okay, and let's grab that. Let's paste that into our RGB. Okay, so now what we're looking for, let's go back to this thing. So you can just see some of this stuff that we're just coming right off of this information. So we did a rounded filled rect. So now what we can do is draw round rect. And what this does, it does the same thing, but it doesn't fill it in, okay? So you can see here we have draw, draw round rect and we have a, a pen height. And the pen height is really just the size that we need to give it, but we probably should have a pen height and a pen width. So let's go G pen height equals, and let's just give it a two, and let's do G pen width, and let's give that a, a two, and then let's go G dot, I believe it's called draw, draw round rect, okay. And let's look at what, what that actually we need. We need the X and Y, and then we need the width and the height. All right, that's correct. So we pretty much can just take the same value that we added up here for our fill rect. So it's exactly the same. And now what it's gonna do, let's save that somewhere. What it's gonna do is it's gonna draw the border over the fill. So really it's just gonna draw a rounded rectangle without a fill over the top of the fill and it's going to make it look like it's a border. So let's take a look at what that does. And then you can see, boom, it looks like it's a border, kind of like a button, pretty fancy. Now we can add some text. Okay, so let's say text. <clears throat> Excuse me for a second. So let's set again the four color for the text, four color. And let's go RGB. And let's just make the text white. So we can just put in 255 all the way across the board for that. Okay. And really what this is, this is draw string. So if we go back in here to our graphics, we can see that text font, text height, text size, text unit, those are all things that we're gonna need. And we're gonna use what's called draw string. If we just look at that, that kind of tells us what we need to do here. And we can kind of actually grab just this information. We could kind of paste it in here. We could use Helvetica. Now, if we remember right, our the size of our thing is pretty big. So I'm gonna say that maybe we should double this to at least 32. And let's put Let's put the word button text in here. Now, our button's pretty big. So I'm thinking that we're probably, if we want to kind of get it to center, just to start off with, we're gonna need something like, maybe like these numbers here. So let's just take a look at what that does. Boom, that looks pretty good. Okay, oh, you notice though when we, resize it, the button text does not resize, or not necessarily resize, but it should move into center of the button. Well, we could do that pretty simple. We could actually set something up for that. And so let's, let's make a property. So let's just call it, let's call it C button. And make it an integer. Let's give it a zero to start with. Okay. And let's start with a some window events. Let's do an open window event. So I'm going to do C button equals CV button 
that width. So it's going to get the width of the canvas. So it's going to always know that. And actually, maybe let's change this property to uh, a W so we know it's width. And because we changed that now, we're going to have to go back to where we had our open event and change it. So it's going to set what the width is at the open. And we also need to set what the width is when it resizes. So there is resizing and resize. Let's take both of these. And let's just grab these and let's reuse them. Okay. So what we can do here now is we can come down here and we can put like an if statement. So we know that a button starts off at 250. So we can go C button width. If it's greater than 250, then. Okay. And if it's not, we'll have an else. And obviously, we'll have an, an end if. Okay. Okay, so if we know that the button's uh, 250, and basically, so if we look at this, let's kind of look at what we were doing here. So when this thing moves, we know that already in the pain event that we're stepping over 46 pixels to the X. So what a good thing for us to do here uh, to change this or to you know figure out what this is is we should first declare an integer. So I'll say dim i as integer and that will equal or what it should do is it should equal the C button width. And because our normal size is 250, if we subtract 250 from it, so say if it's 251, I will return one. And we should be able to add one to that. So what we should be able to do here is go 46 plus I, okay? So that will add that to it, but it still won't necessarily put it in center unless we say, divided by two so it should it this should work right here so we get basically the button width we subtract what the original button width is we take our 46 and we add that to the i and we divide that by two and it should put it in the center of the screen let's give it a try and see what it looks like okay so here's our button text and as you can see now our text is centered to the button. But you can see this works pretty easy. So that's pretty simple. Now our button doesn't really do anything. Um, we could actually give like some kind of effects, you know? Like maybe when we hover, maybe the color of the text should actually change. That would be cool. So if we take a look here, we do have mouse down, mouse enter, mouse exit, mouse up. So what we could do is we could make a property okay and let's call this C button state and let's make this a string value and let's that's right we want a string and let's start off with a string of normal so if C button state let's go back in pain event here now what we can do here is we could set up a select case, which is basically how you do a switch statement in Zojo. So select case and our case for this one would be a string of normal. So this is what normal would be. Okay. So our next one, what we could do, let's say when we go into the mouse enter event, we could give it a state of hover, like a hover effect. Okay, so let's do that. So we go into here, let's go C button state 
equals hover. And when it goes to mouse exit, let's go back to normal. So we're going to switch our states around here. And based upon this information, we can change some things. So let's go back into our paint event. And let's just grab all this information. And let's go into the hover event. And all we want to do is really change the color of the text. So let's bring our little, little tool up here. Let's get, oh, maybe this color here. Okay, let's grab that. And really just want to change, for now we're just going to change the text color to that. Okay, one thing that we're probably going to have to do, most likely at least, going to have to do here, is we're going to have to tell the canvas to refresh. So we're going to do a CV button dot refresh and let's give it a statement of true. This makes sure that it's going to redraw uh, when these events happen. Okay, so let's take a gander at what this does, if it does anything. Okay, so we enter. Hey, look at that. Our button text now has changed colors. And you see how simple that was. All we had to do was set up a property and kind of just change a little value in our print in our paint and you know we we added a select case now we could do something like say on uh, a mouse up mouse down we could change a lot of different things um, to make things happen and let's say like a mouse up let's say we want to run an action we could say uh, that maybe this does a message box on mouse up so we'll just say Hello world, and it'll just put in a simple message box. Well, let's see if it works. And sure enough, it didn't. But here's one thing: on mouse down, we have to say return true. So let's see if that does it. And there it does. Hello world. So do remember, if you are going to be using the mouse down event, if you look here, it has to return a Boolean value if you are using it. So if it's just hit return true, and then it'll fire up the message path to uh, mouse up. So you can see that's very basic what we did. I mean, you could do things for mouse down. You could do things for all, a whole ton of different events. But I mean, this was very, very basic. Uh, what we did. I don't want to go too much into it because I know we only have a limited amount of time uh, that YouTube likes us to have videos up for. So this sets up uh, like custom buttons, but it's not just buttons. You can do this with custom anything. And you know, this was pretty much uh, showing you how you can just do it by dragging a canvas on here. But you could create this canvas as sort of a super class of itself and super class it. So you can constantly reuse these buttons or you can put it in a container control and reuse it as a container control. So there's a lot of things you can do with Zojo just because it's not like you got some kind of fancy little widget in its widget library doesn't mean you can't do it. So it's so fantastic what you can do with Zojo and canvases. So I hope you might have learned something new today. And uh, if you have, give it a try, you know, make some things, do some things and make things happen. It's pretty amazing what you can do with it in such little time. So thanks for joining me, and uh, I hope you see you again. Bye.